Hello, and welcome to Preparing to Survive and Thrive Homesteading channel with Charlie B. So what are we up to today? Well, today I'm going to do something a little different. Something I don't do a whole lot of. I'm going to make a pie. Now, do you remember all that um, pumpkin I freeze-dried? I cooked it down and froze, freeze-dried it. Well, it's been a few days ago that I did that. So it's time to use some more of it up, and I'm going to make a pumpkin pie. This is not your normal pumpkin pie. This is more of a custard. And this recipe, believe it or not, was a recipe that I got back in the 90s and it was made all in the microwave. However, I am not going to do that. I am going to turn it into one that I can cook in the oven. I prefer to not use the microwave. However, I do sometimes, but yeah, let's not use the microwave today. Let's actually turn this microwave pumpkin pie into a regular baked in the oven pumpkin pie. All right. So follow me and here we go. Okay. To be completely honest, before I say no microwave, I am going to melt a half a cup of butter into the microwave. I'm going to start it off in actually the pie plate. Okay. So that will be already done and we'll get to what else we're doing while this is cooking down or melting. Okay, so I'm going to take these Nella wafers. You can use uh, the off-brand if you want to, but these were actually on sale, so they were cheaper, less expensive than the store brand. So I need to have two cups of crumbed Nella wafers. So I'm just going to start, and yes, I bought these this morning, and I opened them up because these things are addictive. So if you're wondering how I'm going to get them into crumbs, I'm just going to take a bunch of these guys and put them in a Ziploc baggie. And I'm going to roll the baggie down like this so I get most of the air out. And then I'm going to take my rolling pin just kind of tap it down like this. These are really, really, really easy to get crushed up. And then I'm going to put them in a measuring cup to make sure I have actually two cups. And I'll be adding this and two tablespoons of sugar to my melted butter, which is over there on the other shelf. Very simple. So, we'll be back when I get our two cups and I'll show you how, what else I'll be doing with these guys. Okay, so I've got my two cups of the Nella wafers that I'm going to mix right in here with the butter. It was one cup of butter. Or one half cup, excuse me, one half cup, only a half cup. And two tablespoons of sugar. I'm just going to sprinkle this all over. Now this is our pie crust. And I should start a whole new segment of what's for dessert, but I haven't figured out if I have time to do that with summer and gardening season coming. So, but I might just start doing one and the videos will pop up here and there. So what's for dessert? I'm going to mix this all really, really good. I just spin my pie plate around like this to mix it all up. Now remember, this is going to be a crust. I'm just going to start spreading it out a little bit to get it up on the sides also just with my fingers now this should make one 10 inch pie so with this i just do definitely start pushing down firm on this to get it to come up. I 
Now, if you're finding this a little difficult to do that, you can let it sit, um, put it in the fridge a little bit for the um, crumbs and the butter to kind of mix together. And it will actually make it a little more stable to get it pushed in to a nice pie shaped crust. But you don't have to do that. You can just keep on working with it and working with it until you get it to be where you want it to be. Now for me, yeah, I think I'm going to set it in the fridge to just kind of, because it's very warm in my kitchen on top of it. I think I'm going to go ahead and put it in the fridge so then I can work with it better. And we're going to actually start making the pie filling. So bear with me. I'll be back in a few minutes once I get things set up. Okay, so what do I have here other than a start of a great tasting mess? Well, I've got two cups of my pumpkin. I'm going to put this in here in my pot. And I'm going to put start it off on low while I'm adding ingredients. Now well, maybe three for my gas stove. It might be more like medium. And I'm also going to add in one cup of brown sugar. I've got two eggs that I'm beating. Put those in last. And I have my spices and such. I have one tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one half teaspoon of salt. You can use whatever kind you want. That's pink Himalaya and one tablespoon of flour. So I'm going to go ahead and add this in right on top of everything. I'll bring this over in a second. Bring the camera over. Starting to smoke. And I'm using one can of evaporated milk. Does not matter what, who makes it, what brand, you just use one cup of evaporated milk. So I'm going to add in my one can. If I said one cup before, I'm sorry. It's one can of evaporated milk. Make sure I get it all out. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in my beaded eggs, my eggs that I beat. Now I'm going to go with this, how I will make my custard for my coconut cream pie. So let's just pray it turns out because this is kind of experiment, but you're coming along with me. So let me bring you over. Yep, I'm gonna scoot you right over here. That's what it's looking like right now. And I'm gonna cook this till it starts to get thick. Now the rest of the pumpkin that I cooked down that I didn't have room for my freeze dryers, I am going to go ahead and just freeze that. So if my husband, my daughter likes this pie, I might go ahead and make one or two more this summer or in the fall, whatever. But it will be easier to do than having to cook it down and then cook it some more. Okay, so let's get this warm and we will be back. Okay, so I changed burners because the other one is bigger and um, it was making this cook too fast. I wanted to definitely smooth this out a little bit more. Now this recipe calls for um, a 16 ounce can of pumpkin that would be store-bought. And of course, mine's not store-bought, so mine's not quite as smooth as store-bought pumpkin would be because I didn't run it through a mixer or anything else like that. But 
If I slow cook it, it will blend together and it won't be quite lumpy, which is not lumpy now. But this, I've really, I've never been one that really liked pumpkin pie and neither is my daughter or my husband. But this I did like. I do like a custard pie and I'm hoping that everybody will like this. I have not made this since probably 1992 oh, or three. It's, it's been a very long time. And the reason I found this recipe is because Tupperware started making microwavable bowls and I sold Tupperware and um, yeah, so I needed something good to make and I made this and it was an amazing, amazing recipe. And I actually liked it, but I don't know why I got away from making it. Probably because over the years I learned that microwaves were not really that great for you. But that's everybody has a different opinion on that. So go with how you want to. And I do use my microwave. So this is getting good and thick. Why this is still slowly cooking down. I'm going to go ahead and get out the pie crust and get that worked the rest of the way. And I'm going to put it in the oven. The workable pie crust at 375 for about 10 minutes we'll be back okay so this is what the pie crust looks like before i put it in the oven i kept the rim here open um normally don't do this for a regular pie crust but that's how i'm going to do it for here i'm going to put it in the oven and i'm just going to do it until it's a looking a little bit more brown and crispy i'll show it to you when i pull it out Okay, well, the pie filling, as you can see, is thick, very, very thick. It's more like a custard. And I'm going to turn it off from the stove. It's only been cooking down for maybe 15 minutes. And as soon as the pie shell comes out, I'm going to go ahead and put this in it. Mm, it smells amazing. We'll be back. And... I did add one ounce of water to the pie filling. Um, the original recipe called for one can, which stayed at 13 ounces, and our cans was only 12 ounces. So I went ahead and added one more ounce of water to the pie filling. Okay, so I pulled this out of the oven, and it started to slide down a little bit. So I went ahead and took a wooden spoon and pushed it back up. I'm going to let it sit just for a moment. So I can actually touch it if I need it to move it. But let me get the camera adjusted and set so you can see me getting this, the pie filling, which is over here, going into the pie shell. Okay, let's see if I can do this without burning myself. So it's not too hot. Now I'm going to preheat the oven again, and this time for the pie filling to bake in the crust is going to be 350 for about 12 to 15 minutes. Like I said, I'm doing this pretty much just how I would do my um, coconut cream pie. I'm going to smear this around and I'm going to get a spatula so I can get this out better. Sorry about that. My camera shut off. I'm just scraping off the spoon. Okay. 
think of it as I'm left-handed. So I'm going to have to swap you around. So you can actually see what I'm doing. So give me a minute again. Okay. Smell, smell, smell so good. Let me get this smeared around a little bit like this. And microwaves already heated. Or, oh my Lord, the oven, convection oven or conventional oven, um, gas actually is already heated. So I am going to get this in there. Mm, I've got to taste the filling. Mm. Oh, mm, 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 mm. it was so good. Wash my hands so I can put. Oh, that's very hot. So we'll be back in a second. Or we'll be back whenever we go to pull it out in about 12 to 15 minutes. Well, I just pulled this little baby out. It is still bubbling. And you can see the edges are nice and crispy. A little darker than what it was and the edge of the pie filling is starting to set up and is a little bit darker and brown okay so this is how i do with my um coconut cream pies also but one day we will definitely break down and do that recipe with you here so i'm going to let this sit for several hours to cool and we'll be back tonight and this is what we're having for dessert okay so here is the pie i kind of stuck my finger at it but don't look at that um, I'm going to get a knife and give this a cut and then we're going to do a taste test. I'll show you it in a moment. Okay, so let's do a taste test. Um, I can tell you right off, I might have cooked it a little bit longer just to get it to set up a little bit better. So, but this is what it looks like. Mm. I do like it very much. You can't taste the pumpkin. Well, like I said, I really didn't like pumpkin pie, but this was always a really good custard that I did in the microwave, but I'm trying to change up the recipe to do it in an actual oven. So if you hang on one minute, I'll be back. I'm going to eat this. Um, I'll definitely make this again. I'm going to also give you the microwave directions so you can also do that if you choose to make it in a microwave for something a little different maybe a thanksgiving or you know memorial day or labor day or whatever you want to but cheers i'll be back in just one second i'm gonna try some whipped cream there mm. Mm. very good i'll be back in a few well hello and we're back with the pumpkin pie the pumpkin custard pie all right so um, one thing I want to show you is once it's set in the refrigerator for a couple hours, it actually set up really nice. Um, sorry, the pie pan is messy, but that's what you get when you got pumpkin pie pulled out. But so I wouldn't cook it down anymore. It was done. Um, it's very good. My husband said it tastes a little bit more like a spice pie and not so much as a pumpkin pie. So, um, that's probably because I added a little extra cinnamon into it, which I like better. Maybe next time I'll pull it out and see if I get more of a pumpkin taste. But the pie is delicious. We love it. Now, I also promised you that I would go over the directions. Let me get it out here. Yeah, good luck reading that. Uh, it was kind of dirty because it's been from the 90s. So I go over to over the microwave directions also. Now, it's the same exact recipe. Okay. Um, and how I melted the butter and crushed up the um, crust is the same way that you did it too for the um, microwave. Okay, so with the mashed pumpkin, brown sugar and cinnamon and spices like that, I used to put it in a two quart casserole dish and I blend everything together, all the pumpkin, the spices, the flour, the eggs, everything. Okay, and then I would microwave that at medium for 12 to 14 minutes. And that also depends on how um, 
how high wattage of your microwave is so that you'll have to test. Okay, and I was stirring it every five minutes until it got very thick. Okay, once it got thick, I would pour it into the crusted pie filling and I would um, put that in the microwave. Okay, the only thing I did differently, I did not bake, I did not pre-bake the crust. So what you're using the microwave, so of course you wouldn't pre-bake it because you're not using the oven. So, but I put, poured the um, pie filling into the crust and then I would um, microwave it at medium again for 20 to 25 minutes until it was cooked. Okay, now, um, you know it's done when the edges start to set up and the crust starts to get a little bit browner. And then you just let it, um, and the, um, the center of the pie would be slightly soft, but that's all right. And then you just set it for about 10 to 15, well, 15 to 20 minutes at room temperature and let it start to um, harden up or thicken up, get more stable. Um, I don't remember if I cut it warm. I probably didn't. So, um, like I said, it's been, you know, 20, probably closer to 30 years since I actually made this thing. So, yep. Um, but I know if you put this in the refrigerator, it definitely sets up much better than if you let it sit out at room temperature. So, well, now you've got my baking instructions and the microwave instructions. Go ahead and try them both. It is fun and, hey. You might like it better in the microwave. I just prefer not to always use the microwave, and I wanted to try this out. Next time, I'm hoping it'll be cold enough I can get some wood and the wood cook stove and actually make it in there. Okay, well, remember, if you like my content, like, share, and subscribe. Okay, don't, don't forget that. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please send me a comment about what you think, and if you're going to try this, and if you have tried it, please let me know. I would love to, love to, love to know. So, well, this is Charlie B signing out. And remember, like, share, and subscribe. I'll be talking with you soon.